Hello, I'm Cole Malloway. I am 12, I am in 7th grade, and I live in Redondo Beach, California, in the United States of America, on the planet of Earth, in the solar system, in the one of the arms of a spiral galaxy of the Milky Way, somewhere in the universe. Well, I've been helping in the kitchen forever. At a very early age, I started experimenting with things, especially boiling ingredients. But in the last couple of years, my culinary adventures have really taken off. I've started where I'll make an entire meal. I like th that you can kind of experiment with things. You're creating something of your own. And it's cooking, maybe not baking, for the most part, you can add what you want and it'll probably turn out okay. So it's kind of like a different form of science, and I really love science. Another thing is that it's a very good teacher, because if you do something wrong and then it tastes horrible, you don't do that again. It's a different way to learn things. One thing that I really like cooking is um, breakfast, partially because I'm really hungry. Um, like French toast, it's easy and it tastes good and you can't really mess it up. Another thing would be anything that has kind of a weird, quirky procedure that you wouldn't normally expect. Like, um, we have this chicken that we do, and it's put on like a drying rack above a pan of potatoes. So it gets nice and crispy on all sides, and the fat kind of drips down onto the potatoes, making them umber yummy scrumptious. There's a salmon recipe that I love, because it's really easy, it's kind of in a pouch. I don't think I have a favorite food. I like a lot of things. And also I like a lot of things that most kids wouldn't, like roasted vegetables, seafood, garlic, <laughs> um, a much wider repertoire. I don't just like kind of fast food, chicken nuggets, and mac and soup. Um, also, it doesn't have to be fancy. I like things like apples and cheese or some bread with some butter and sugar on it. I don't like a lot of things that most kids like, like candy. Bane of our civilization, those things. Um, and I also don't like foods that have no texture, like things that are mushy or kind of slimy and gooey. Most vegetables I like, but things like boiled vegetables occasionally get a little grody, <laughs> and I just won't go near them. I love meats. I'm a carnivore, but I can't cook them. Probably because I don't quite know when they're done. It's a little mysterious for me. Also, anything that requires too much patience, like ice cream, when is it done churning, or rice, which I don't know how people like don't open the lid every five seconds. Um, I'm just too scatterbrained for that. I like science, just about every branch of science. Biology, physics, quantum physics, rather tricky, um, robotics, engineering robot. Um, I'm on a robotics team. We work with robots like this. They're made of Legos, as you can see, and a little computer. And we have a competition, and they compete to do little tasks in two and a half minutes. Yeah, I also do like playing the piano. I've um, been doing piano for about three years, I'd say. It's fun. I like the music theory as much as I like the actual music and doing improv. I can read music, but I prefer to play by ear. I don't just like cooking. I like science and animals, like this kitty. His name is Spot, because he has a spot right there. Um, also, I have kind of a strange sense of humor at times. A little weird. <laughs> a little scatterbrained. I'm just special! <laughs> See? My mama says I'm special. I can make lots of strange voices. Uh, <laughs> I like cooking, obviously. I like science. Good at memorizing things, like weird trivia. Fairly good at school. Honor student. Yeah. A's and B pluses in every class in gate. I'd say being competitive means trying your hardest, kind of being the best you can be. And also it means not just trying to win, but wanting to win. Or in some people might say needing to win. If you have a good time, it's okay, you don't have to win. But being competitive, I, I am fairly competitive, I'm just not like tunnel vision for winning. But I have been in competition. I consider kind of physical sports in this modern day and age to be kind of a waste of time. But I think intellectual sports, a sport of the mind like robotics, definitely is useful. And we have competitions, at least two a year, one invitational and one qualifying event that we rarely get past. Um, and those are always fun. It's important for me to um, do the best that I can do. 
Okay, so here we have some romaine lettuce, and it, as you can see, it's um, growing beautifully with its little guardian here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're gonna harvest a little bit of it for our salad. Let's see. And if you don't cut off too much, if you cut, don't cut it off too close to the base, it'll grow back, which is always cool, so you can have it be renewable. So once you've rinsed the icky, gicky, ugly, ingly, bunglies off, they still might be on there. They're just not attached anymore. So you have to move them. And you want to probably move them around in here for like a minute or two. Put them in here and rinse them off in small batches like this. Okay, so we have our salad with the bib lettuce, romaine lettuce, and spinach in it. But if you want to add a little bit more pop, let's say, pizzazz, you can take some bell peppers, lop off both ends, make sure you get all the nasty white stuff out, or as much as you can. Sometimes it's easier once you cut it open. I'm gonna smash it down. <laughs> Normally I'd use a chef's knife for this, but I can't really hold a chef's knife <laughs> at the moment. Nasty white stuff. <laughs> More nasty white stuff. Uh, yeah, so if you just make them into little kind of matchstick-ish things, you can get one or two in a bite and it'll add some pizzazz. Okay, so here's our salad dressing. We have the herbs, roughly chopped. Now we're gonna add, I'd say about a third of a cup of red wine vinegar. It provides a nice tartness and some flavor, also. And instead of just vinegar, as most vinaigrettes have, it's also going to have some limes. A trick with limes, we're getting the juice. Kind of give them a massage of sorts before you slice them. You can get more juice out of them. So chop them along the equator. Oh, didn't quite separate. And then just kind of score them. Okay, so they, this lime wasn't very juicy, so we're having to use a second to get the desired amount of juice. So you can kind of wing it. You don't have to be so precise. It's like, if, you, if it's so kind of um, precise, the kind of tin soldiers marching to the beat with no individuality. It's the same each time, and it's no fun then. Um, so now we have this. Lime, red wine, vinegar, and herbs. So you can take your immersion blender, one of my favorite tools, and kind of grind up the herbs a bit. It'll be a very unattractive kind of brownish green color for a little while, but the olive oil will help get rid of that. Also, sometimes if you want to add a little bit more like body, something like this, add a little bit of whatever vegetable you're adding. It doesn't have to be vegetable that you're adding, but if you just tear up a little bit, chuck it in there, and add a little bit more body. And if you want color, also. So now, so everything's all ground up, we're gonna add some olive oil. And I'd say we should use about two thirds of a cup. But I don't think I'm gonna measure. I think I'm just gonna go by eye, because this little spout, you wanna add it slowly, and this will make it easier to add the oil slowly. You want more oil than vinegar. Okay. So in this chicken, there's also some potatoes that soak up all the chicken's yummy juices. So what we're doing is we're taking the potato, slicing off just a little bit of each end, okay? and then scoring one of the ends. Let the juices get in there a little better. So the chicken, Here's a little bit of unusual procedure for you. We'll be suspended above these potatoes. 
by a cooling rack. Like this. It fits into this big like um, lasagna dish with fits perfectly. And the chicken just goes in here. You get night lots of circulation so it gets crispy on all sides, no kind of soggy bits. So for the chicken, we're gonna put some dry seasonings, but I'm also going to put some green onion. So we've chopped off the kind of nasty bits, chopped it into little slices, and I'm now just kind of getting into incy meansy little pieces. Harder than it looks with your wrist immobile. <laughs> so we have this little seasoning blend. It's like a like a normal herb blend mixed with some salt, pepper, garlic and onion powder, some paprika, some like a kind of a like a southwest type seasoning, all mixed together into a lovely little amalgam. This we will liberally sprinkle onto our chicken, make sure to get both sides, so I'm gonna have to flip it over. Put a little bit of seasoning on the potatoes. Doesn't matter if some of it gets on the rack. Okay, so we have the chicken, which has the green onions and the seasoning on it, and we're putting it on the oiled rack. Make sure none of the chicken's kind of spilling over the edge or the fat from it, instead of going onto our potatoes, will go directly onto the floor of your oven, causing a big smoky mess. Add a teeny tiny bit of olive oil, teeniest little bit of it. No need to spread it on there. It'll kind of spread out over. And now we put this entire contraption into an oven preheated to about 400 degrees. So we put, for the, for the first 20 minutes, we've had it at 400 degrees, just to kind of start it off. Then we reduced it to 350. And it's been at 350 for the last 50 minutes. Now, for the last 10 minutes, we're going to turn it all the way up to 500. Because our oven is pretty darn old and a little um, low, we actually had to cook it for 10 extra minutes. But the important thing is not time. The important thing is that the chicken is um, above 165 degrees in the deepest part of the recipe. So if you just stab it in right about there. And make sure it's not hitting milk, because that can give you a false reading. And that the potatoes, you can easily stick a fork into them. So these are done. Okay, so here's the final product. We have in this little glass the dressing. Over here we have our salad. You can see all the different bits and pieces of it. One advantage of the potatoes, putting them in the flat farm, you get these nice little caramelized sides here, and those are yummy scrumptious. And as you can see, chicken, which is we know it's done, um, has the green onion still on it, and all of its skins not soggy. Yum! If you want to try our chicken, you can observe that it's nice and moist. And you can observe, but I certainly can, that it is quite delicious.